Welcome to Crappie Hippie at the Bench, an informational video series on how to tie jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle. Find us at glasswaterangling.com. And now, here's Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Hey everybody, it's Crappie Hippie, and welcome to Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Well, we're sitting here in the middle of winter, at least we are here in Kansas, and uh, a lot of the fishing's boiled down to fishing off the docks, or maybe sneaking out in a boat here or there, but uh, the skim ice is on, so the shore fishing is kind of out, the small craft fishing on the ponds and so forth is out, the fish program ponds are closed also, so what's a better time to sit around and tie than in the middle of winter when your fishing's really limited? Now, I'm in looking at the flows always looking at the tail race flows just to see about some open water here and there and if you're lucky enough to live around a river or something you might be able to find something open but one of my favorite things to do in this time of year is dock dunking and uh, one of my favorite presentations is to use jigs with a lot of silver in them and this leads me to a question that i get all the time and i read about all the time in the blogs and on the facebook groups and so forth is like do you have to paint your jig heads no it's all right there's no jig police going to come and get you what no there really is no jig head police going to come and get you because you don't paint your jig heads i mean the very when i was a kid we never painted them we made a lot of our jig heads out of split shot and we had a lot of uh jigs that we you know we were using our tester paints and we had to save them for our model cars and our model airplanes and such so and swiping your sister's nail polish sometimes that was an issue so a lot of times it's just easier to leave them gray and we didn't really see a whole lot of difference, although we did like the eye appeal of having a nicely painted jig with a little eye on it and all that, but we couldn't afford to get fancy because we needed them for real to keep fishing. So anyway, one of the great things about lead-free alloys, and we're talking about lead-free, I hope you're digging my uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency t-shirt, get the lead out Minnesota, way to go Minnesota, keep pushing toward that public education, keep providing opportunities for lead-free lure manufacturers and tackle manufacturers to find an audience, bring these people to the public forefront so this movement can continue to grow. All right, so I want a chance to brag up on some lead-free materials. Well, your tin and bismuth alloys tend to stay shiny, okay? They don't get gray like lead does. They don't oxidize. So this might dull just a little bit, but you're basically going to have that nice shiny jig head you know, without having to paint it. Now, if you want a silver jig head, there's ways to get that. Uh, that video I did on doing a jig uh, called a Goldie, where we use a brass bead for the jig head and we make a gold jig head, well, you can do that with a silver bead and that's the way to get a silver jig head. Of course, you can get silver nail polish, you can get silver paint, you know, and you can go ahead and paint them that way. You won't get the shine and then you can just use glitter. Uh, it won't be exactly, you know, it'll be a different sort of silver, it's a different sort of glitz and what I do when I use glitter is I put a little spray on glue or or just a little some sort of little adhesive or just dab on some uh, glue and uh, maybe even just a little uh, super glue if I'm moving fast enough and then you put it in the you sprinkle the glitter all over the jig head tap it off and then you let that dry then you come back later and dip it in uh, some uh, lacquer I mean not lacquer what am I saying some vinyl I like to use vinyl or some other sort of sealant to keep that glitter on there. So there's ways to get a silver jig head, but the funnest, easiest way is to fish lead free and get a hold of some of these terrific tin bismuth jig heads. These are made from uh, uh, bird shot and buckshot cast off, uh, shot for shot shells. When they know the, the little BBs don't come out quite right, they don't go through the filter screens and so on quite right. So all the perfect ones go over here and all the ones that aren't perfect get left behind and then they're dumped over there well they take all of that scrap and they sell it to us fishers and we melt it down and make it into these wonderful wonderful 96 percent bismuth jig heads and this is an eighth ounce on a number two aberdeen hook and let me get so i can see what i'm doing and we're going to tie up a cool silver jig for wintertime fun and to celebrate the fact that you don't have to paint your jig heads to tie up cool jigs. We're going to do a video on how to paint jig heads. But not today. We're going to celebrate the unpainted and we're going to celebrate winter. Even though that's asking a lot. Because uh, around here, 
All right, so there's my thread bed. Excuse me, I gotta get my cards here. Keep my vice a little. My vice is missing a foot, so I have to even it up with a little piece of cardboard. All right, so let's look at some of the things we can do. Where's my scissors? There they are. All right, so before we get started on this one, look at some shiny materials and some things that we can use to complement tying a lovely silver head, whether it is naturally and natively silver because of the alloy or because we've painted it or we've glittered it or we've painted and glittered it or so on. So we've got a silver, oh, and we've used a bead and we've made it that way. So we've got a lovely silver jig head in front of us. Let's do a silver pattern just to have some fun. Now, what I'm going to use in this pattern, I'm going to make the tail entirely out of flash boo. And I love this one. It You can see it kind of flashes, you know, kind of green, kind of blue, kind of this, kind of that. Uh, it looks real silver, kind of in the water, real chrome in the water. And of course, got some great uh, black flashaboo in mixed in with it. So that's a nice shiny one. Of course, you can get one that's wider strands than this. You can get ones that are all silvery. Uh, you can get some that look silver, but actually then kind of shine blue in the water. They look, actually look a little purple, a little UV purple when you hold them up. But when you get them in the water, they're more bluish. Uh, uh, this is Crystal Flash. Now, I don't have any true pearl. I wish I did, but I don't. Um, so, But I do have this. This is what I'm talking about. This is a UV blue. That uh, looks purple right in here right now. Uh, that's going to flash, though, more on a bluish type wavelength. Uh, so not a real, like, pure silver, but it does give you a good look in a jig. All right, and another thing that we can keep do to keep it shiny is get what's called Crystal Flash Chenille. I have a few kinds here. Uh, got the red, got to have the red. I got some purple. Purple's a great winter color. Blue's a great winter color. Uh, black is, is uh, an essential, too. Now, you're going to look at this flash, and it looks like the strands are pretty fine. It is. This is actually medium number two, but crystal comes this way. You know, you can get down a tiny, tiny, you know, zero on this. Uh, I Then you go, you know, to a large, you know, and this is what you're going to get. So, you know, I, I go with number two. I just go with number two. Just go with number two for economy's sake. All right, but if you're tying a lot of bigger patterns and stuff, or you just want to tie straight onto the hook shank with the crystal flash chenille, go ahead and get the large, get the number four, because it's no more expensive usually, or if it is, it's 20 cents more or something, you know, a yard, I mean, not even a yard, but a package. Um, but we're going to stick with the uh, number two, and we're going to use the this beautiful white, and you can see, look at all the different colors coming out of that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is really really fun stuff and it really gives you a lot a lot of flashback and when we're in the winter time and we're fishing in the dark places whether it's under the ice or you're in the fish house or you're fishing near the shade of the docks the shadow of the docks with the with the roof over and you're down in the slips and it's fairly dark so flash, uh, flashy patterns you know ice fishers always with their spoons and this and that uh, things that kind of go flash in the flash because whatever little ray of light you can get in there you'd like to telegraph it to the fish say hey there's some food over here. Wink, wink. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take just about five strands of this. All right, we don't need a big full tail for that. We just want. Now I just take it and I double it. Okay, so it's pretty even, and then I get you know that strand's short. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna pull it on this end. Kind of see, kind of even it up, kind of even it up now. That's way more material than I need, so I'm going to pull this all together. I'm going to catch all these loops with my scissors. Okay, I'm going to cut it in half like that. Okay, now you're saying, can I use tinsel off a Christmas tree? Well, all this stuff is made out of mylar. All right. Now, if I want a shorter tail, I, I can double that again. Okay, and take it over. Try to keep it as even as possible. The thing about mylar, most of your Christmas tree mylar is pretty flimsy. Um, it, it works, it works fine, but it gets crump, crimpled and crinkled and real easy and stays that way, isn't that why? I don't know, if you're the folks that just toss yours and buy new, or if you're like my mom, we used to get the, the tinsel tinsel that was actually more metallic, and we'd have to lay that out and wind it back on pieces of cardboard. We'd try to use it uh, year after year. Um, okay, so now I got this, but anyway, if that's all you can get hold of, by all means, use it, or if you lose your jigs fast enough. Look, we're, we're into a lot of non-natural materials here today, things like mylar, things like crystal flash, which is a plastic. We're going to be looking at some other things, so we can't get too hung up. 
on what things are made out of. We want the flashaboo is special because it's made to be fished with, not hung on a Christmas tree and possibly thrown away immediately. So, but mylar is, um, you know, comes in different grades, and this is the fishing grade. Now you see, I'm gonna, I'm just laying this straight down the hook shank like this. All right, and we can do more. Let me get my thread back here, more right even with that hook point. That's where I want to be with this. Okay, and I'm gonna put that on like that. All right, do the same way I do everything else. A couple of wraps, and I'm gonna pull it down tight, and then I'm gonna bend all this back together. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a couple more wraps on it. Okay, nice and tight because I'm telling you, the thing about mylar is it, and all things like hair, anything with a little more bulk to it than boo. And you are going to uh, find a material that wants to roll on you and roll on you really bad. So tight, tight, tight. Sometimes I drift off while I'm tying, I'm listening to a podcast or thinking about what video I'd like to make next or any number of things, wishing I was fishing. You know how it is. And you're, you sit here and you kind of daydream and you don't get these wraps tight. And then you get down here to the end and right as you're making that hat, that hitch to end the whole thing, all oh, the whole jig just rolls over on you. you know? And you're just like, ugh. That goes in my retie box or my use first box or whatever. I mean, sometimes you can get them secured. So anyway, at the end of this, we, we come in. We could come in and even this up a little bit. You know, we can do it at the end. We can do it right now. It doesn't really matter. I, I kind of like to leave them uneven. I don't like a, a broom tail. Now, a lot of people do, and I'm not throwing them in the shade. I, you know, that's fine and fine and fine. Um, but uh, I like for this uh, flashaboo especially, I like to keep it a little uneven. Now, because I use... The uh, number two, you know, I can go on an eighth ounce jig. I normally start here, go back, secure it, and then come back forward. And that'll make a pretty good body, okay? But this is so fine. If you start getting into eighth ounce, quarter ounce, you know, three eighths ounce, this is, you know, you really need to switch to the larger diameter. But one way you can economize, okay, is to, you come down here, you grab, you some, aha! That's where I left it. You grab yourself a piece of white marabou, uh, white marabou, right? You grab yourself a piece of white chenille, and you just tie it in down here. Okay, you tie it in good. You come back here to your hook point. This is where your body's going to be, right? And then you take this thread all the way back. So you wrapped over it twice. Now you're really pulling tight, pulling tight. You see that jig moving, bobbing, dragging down like a spring against that J bend. We're going to put this on here tight, real tight. Everything's got to go on tight. Can't be drifting off thinking about those pretty speckly crappies that we all love to catch and eat and those nice fun bass and boy, will those walleyes show up. That's always a good time. we got so many friends out there. So there we go. We're going to put a little underbody of white and, uh, and we can go down here and tie in our smaller dynam dynameter, our, sm <laughs> our smaller diameter uh, chenille here, okay? And we get a good secure on it, so we know it's not gonna slip. And then we come up here, and then I'm gonna put a stop hitch in it, just, just, just one, one or two turns. Snug it down, snug it down. Don't break your thread. But you're going to every now and then, okay? It does, uh, you know. You start out, you bust it a lot, and then just like you know, any any element of fishing, you get better and better at it. You know, your first time you throw a bait caster, you backlash in every which way, and then you get to where, you know, you only have one or two backlashes a day. Anyway, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna pull in this tight. We're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap these really close, really close, and really tight. All right. And that gives us a nice finished body. I'm going to pull that tight, tight, tight. And I'm going to come around it with my crisscross and secure it. And take another one over it and secure it. But that's enough. Okay, and I'm pulling that down tight. Okay, so you, you get a nice body on there. If you want it fuller than that, put more white down. Or, you know, or you can just keep going. You know, you can go back down and back. I'm just trying to save you a little, you know, little chenille here. Because this is generally a little more expensive than just your ordinary rayon white in medium. And this way, you you know, you get a nice full body and uh, um, 
still get that beautiful crystally flash. Um, there are guys that insist that the whole body needs to be, you know, such and such a way. Great, great. Everybody's got their deal, and they've got the fish catches to back it up, and that's all right with me, but all I can do is go from my experience and how like I like to tie, and this is how I like to do a crystal flashy body until I become the crystal flash king, because isn't it crazy? They've got, you know, you get into this stuff. I've, I've already warned you about New Age. Yeah, you get into this stuff. Oh, my goodness. There's millions of colors. It's all super fun. You may be spending all your money. Maybe you don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, I broke it. I broke it. Now, when that happens, all you got to do, you can be satisfied with that knot and just come in. And, and that's probably plenty of knot. Um, but it wasn't slipping down the way I wanted to, which has me a little concerned. But you can just come in and put your Sally Hansen's right in there and call her good, or you can come back in here, start a thread again, okay, and another thing, you know, I didn't break it on the one part, but I sure as heck broke it when I snugged it down there, and now I'm going to pull that down, I'm going to get that knot down in there, and then I just need a couple hitches to keep it in place, and now my knot is down in and around the hook shank where it needs to be, and that's a lot better, and then whack, got all that frass, from the thread, and kaboom, there she is, just a, a lovely little sparkle tail jig, saying so, you can even this, this fishing grade uh, uh, flash boot can get bent, uh, beat up a little bit, so you want to, you know, make sure and put these in a compartment where you're not just piling them up and, and, and cr or slamming the flash boot and the tackle box lid, that kind of stuff, they need a little bit of care, of course the best jig boxes I think are the kind where you can put them in the foam and line them up and treat them just like flies just like good quality hand tied flies because that's what these are good quality hand tied jigs for catching fish and they deserve as good a place as you can put them within your budget frankly i mostly get compartment boxes at sales and the flea markets and stuff so that's where mine go but i i certainly enjoy a good box where they can be rode up and stuck in and, and the tails are really protected from squishing all right, so let's do one more. I know I don't want to make this video too long, and, and you you know, you know I've made my point and all that stuff, but I got this really pretty, um, uh, I'm tighten that just a bit. Uh, I got this really pretty silvery blue chenille off eBay, and you can see it's got some blue fibers in there. Definitely got some blue fibers in there, but it really gives us beautiful silver, and there's a lot of different silver chenilles that you can get are silver tone, chenille's gray, you know, and so on in that range that give you a lovely, 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 lovely jig. So we're going to introduce another thing when we're going to make this. Here's another shiny accent that you can get. And this, my friends, is embroidery thread, okay? Different types of embroidery thread. So I have a dear, dear friend, God rest her soul, that went to a flea market and she saw a lady selling a, a big bags of this. Uh, probably somebody bought a whole, they seem to have bought a whole bunch for a project and then never finished it or decided embroidery wasn't for them. And she picked up this giant bag of these things, uh, these little spools for five bucks. Okay, now this kind is called Delight Blue, but there's Krennic. There's all kinds of, of good metallic embroidery thread that's fun to use when you tie your flashy, flashy jigs. Now, I've got, um, I think I'm going to do this one. This is a super cool one. This is a silver and black. I mean, I just love that. Now, this is all under the, you know, alternative materials type thing. And this is another area where fashion is crossing over or we're crossing over into fashion or what have you. And this metallic thread is nice and strong. You know, it does a good job of holding up. Um, it's not an uber material, but it, it really does, does uh, work quite well for this. So we're going to take that and we're going to get started here. Let me grab, there it is. All right, uh, I'm going to tie this with the white. Why not? Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to tie a basic, just a basic boo jig. All right, and we're just going to throw in some accents. And one thing about embroidery thread is that if you put a bunch of it in, you're going to have to use, you know, keep the jigs in single compartments or line them up, you know, in a box that has the foam or the way to line the jigs up because... It, once you fish with it a little bit or, or shown people and, and stuff, uh, it, it comes a little frayed on the ends, which is great for the action, but then all the hooks start getting involved and, and it does tangle up uh, your jigs, you know, easily. Uh, 
once again, you want that more of that kind of fly box style jig box, you know, or just take your chances, which is what I got to do, or hope I brought the right one, because sometimes I'll take a compartment box and just put one or two jigs in each and just hope I've, I've picked the right one, you know. I, you know, I'm also that guy that just, just dumps Marabou into the compartment box and the whole thing is just a, a complete way, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten jigs in each compartment. You got to dig around. I'm not, <laughs> not real organized sometimes. <laughs> Because I have too much stuff and I'm too big a geek. All right, come on, make the jig, Johnny. Let's do it. All right, I don't know what I'm looking around here for. I'm sorry, folks. Here we go. All right, we're going to come on down here. We're going to get a thread bed. I'm going to put the hitch right there. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color that I love, and I have very little of it. I wish I had a good solid ounce. I just kind of bought a quarter ounce on a lark. Uh, well, actually, I wish I had more, more than an ounce. But anyway, this is this grayish blue called Dunn. And you can get a blue done that's bluer, and you can get a, you know, such and such done. But, you know, basic done. Uh, gorgeous. You know, oh, come on, crappy hippies. Great. Yeah, da, 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 da. you could see little blue in there. All right. It's not a cadet blue. It's a, it's done. And uh, it's fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So I, I got this beautiful piece of blood quill. So I'm just going to do the old method there because I'm going to make this a bicolor. Okay. In fact, I'm going to make it more of a done jig with a white belly streak is what it's going to end up looking more like than it is like a white and gray uh, bicolor. So, whoa! Pulling down on that thread. Pull, 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 pull. You know, there we go. Now, turn and look at it. And that's so cool. Thank you again, Jeff. After all these decades of using a D.H. Thompson, we've already, I've made a video about where and how I got this, if you're curious. Even though in my one video I, I swear behind my, my D.H. Thompsons and, and uh, I still have them right back there um, for when I do clinics and stuff. Let's get this terrible, terrible ordeal over with in terms of the, the fear of the germs that's keeping us apart. And uh, probably Hippie will get back out there and be talking to people. So anyhow, we're going we're gonna to just put in that much white. You know, yeah, it's pretty bicolor. You know, whatever. You know, I'm not gonna agonize. But that is, you know, the thing. You know, I could, I could put in just half this and be a perfectly good jig, really cool look, with just white streak down there. You know, I could, I could, you know, turn it on its head and have barely any done in there and barely any gray. You know, you get into tying gray jigs, you're gonna go all over the place because monochromatics are not as, you know, single color as you might think. I don't know how to describe it, but all I'm trying to say is there's a million shades of gray and there's a million ways to uh, to uh, apply them to baits. Specifically thinking of the grays that you can find on turkey feathers. Uh, I'm particularly thinking of the gray you can find on turkey feathers. That's what it is. So anyway, what do we got there, you know? Here's what we got. We got, you know, a nice, nice two-tone. And now I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in with the with the uh, embroidery and I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a lot I love this stuff I love it right so we got to do our thing you know we come in go like that even it up see and take it easy see how I quickly cut that my scissors are a little dull because this stuff will kink and crinkle and stuff and that's fine it'll straighten out in the water but if you just go nice and slow with this don't build up a lot of static charge don't get in such a hurry, because it really is a game of patience tying. I get in front of you guys, and I'm my game of patience just goes out the window because I'm so excited to be here doing this. Okay, now I'm not going to double it again because I want it to stay floppy and then trim. So now I'm going to bring my thread down. Okay, get it down here by the hook point, and then I'm going to lay this even. I'll lay half of it on here. I'm gonna lay it on the top. A couple of hitches in there. Now is your time to adjust it. You know, you want it going down the side, great. You want to roll it, you know, you want to push it around till it's clear on top, great. But you know, so first we take this, we're gonna take them both together. And we're gonna pull that down, pull that in, just like that. Now I'm looking at it, you know. I want I like it going straight down the side. You know, if you want to go on top, you've got to kind of take take the strands. Stand them up, okay, get them all together, and then pull them onto the top, or this would be the bottom, actually, pull them onto the top, 
and hitch it over, you know. Likewise, I'm going to pretend I can't rotate, and I'm on a DH, you know, regular. Likewise, you want them on the top, you've got to patiently bring them this way. Okay, I'm, I don't want them on the top, so I'm not going to do it. But you, you bring them this way if you're lucky and you got something you can do this, or take the jig out of your DH, turn it over. Anyway, you, you bring them up this way, and you, you bring the flash across the top. You know, I don't think there's any right way. I think, I think you know, is going down the sides a cop-out? I don't know. I just like it. I use it most of the time. I'm always confused, you know, should the flash be because the belly is white and this and that, or should the flash be on the top, or, you know, do we, are we overthinking it entirely? Um, which I'm tending to think yes. But we know when we look at, when we, our frail human selves, look at videos of fish, the flash that we tend to see is flashing off their broadsided little bodies. So, bring this back in here. I'm gonna, since I played with it so much, I'm going to give it another turn. You know, and then I'm going to come up here. So I got it, I got it, I got it in the sides, got it in the sides. Love it. I'm going to come back here. Now, you can leave a lot of this trailing back here. They call that a shiny hiney when you leave a lot of stuff longer than the marabou. And, of course, be careful not to just trim the whole thing unless that's the look you're going for. I see what I call broomtail jigs where it's just off even. There's guys that love them, swear by them. And, if you know, like I say, they got the fish, in, you know, the fish to back it up. They got the happiness, the confidence. Who am I to tell people how to tie? You know, I'm just showing people some ideas if they want to join in and have some fun. I'm not trying to tell people this is right, this is wrong. This is, this is too much of that going on. Right? Fishing's about having fun and just sharing ideas as far as I'm concerned. So that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to take this, this beautiful, cool, and we have this color on the website. And I came across a, a chenille supplier, a rather unusual textile mill. They had these, you know, they, they make two miles of this stuff, and then they have these pieces at the end that are X yards long, and uh, they sell them off, and uh, it's a great, great buy. So I'm passing them on. But there we go. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Okay. This is such a cool, unusual color. And then I got that security knot I put in, and this is only when you're double stacking your chenille. You know, if you're using a bigger chenille, you know, or you just want a body that this size, this is a perfectly fine body size, okay? I just happen to like them a little fatter, you know? And only, I really only started doing that because I started fishing with guys that do it. Uh, I, you know, I've used plenty of jigs with that size body, okay? No big deal. But when you're going to double stand, you know, I'm not using number four, so I can't get the fat body in one trip. So and whenever you stack your chenille, you want to come down here and rope that, that first turn. Pull it down tight and rope it in so it don't go sliding off the back. And then you come in this way, tight, 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 super tight. One more wrap. Try not to break it. There you go. And then you come in there, come in there like that. Wiggle that a little bit, pull it down. All right, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take these snippers and I'm gonna take that chenille right off of there. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna pull that down tight. And I felt it pull down. And it looks pretty good. And there you go. You got that nice. Move my fat fingers out of the way. You got that nice, flashy black and silver. Isn't that just cool as heck? All righty, all righty, all righty. That was awful fun. Thanks for joining me today on Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Silver patterns for winter. Do I have to paint my jig heads? Silver patterns, yes. Do I have to paint my jig heads? No. Take that silver jig head and do something fun with it. This has been Crappie Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas, saying tight lines and valentines. Peace out. Thank you for watching Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Crappie Hippie at the Bench was brought to you by Glasswater Angling. Find us at glasswaterangling.com. You can also find Crappie Hippie and his good buddy Tim Tacklebox Beat on the Lure Love podcast released every other Wednesday. 
But most of all, everybody get on out there with your hand-tied jigs, bugs, and lures, and catch yourself some fish.